I'm ready to sit down with Senator Pizarro and solve this thing. As long as it's in a real way, the numbers add up, and we get there our transportation system fixed, not just for the next biennium, but for the next generation. I believe the call that was passed for the special session was just for the bonding and the school construction, and there's really the call for uh, transportation and the tolls to you. Uh, are you concerned that they're, they're afraid, meaning the Democratic leadership, that a tolls vote this summer is going to affect their majority potential in the next election next year? No, tolls will be part of a special session. We'll make sure that that no, happens. No, I we'll guess I didn't, I didn't say that very artfully. I'm sorry. Will you call them into special session to deal with tolls? Yes. yes. Yeah. We're going to sit down with the leadership in the next couple of weeks um, and uh, work on this collaboratively, but we're going to get it done. Is there anything so, you would have been done differently uh, in your approach to working with trying to see what and see where you come? We come from different worlds. You know, they spent their whole life in and around building this building, and uh, I spent my life um, as a business person, you know. Uh, so we've got to get to know each other a little bit. And, uh, you know, I see a problem and I want to solve it. And uh, sometimes I'm in a bit of a rush. And uh, this place, um, I, I've never heard the phrase, it's a talker. <laughs> it's a talker. Sometimes people don't want to make a decision. And they want to talk at the death, or they want to study at the death, or they want to avoid a tough decision. And uh, that's not the world I come from. And, and frankly, you know, when I ran, I ran as somebody who comes from a very different background than what you're used to around here. And I ran as somebody who started up a business and created jobs. And I ran as somebody who's going to have the mind of a small business person when it comes to solving problems. So um, we're getting to know each other. It's a building that's based on relationships. Um, I didn't know everybody when I moved, uh, got up here. There's a few more people than I did. And uh, I think we've got good relationships. And the door is open, and we're going to be working together. So the biggest expense that any small business faces is health care. And there was nothing done this year. Um, the Connecticut option um, died a very public death. Um, there was nothing done this year to lower the cost of health care for small businesses. Is that a failure? Well, it's not a success. <laughs> Look, I, I was disappointed. Um, a, I thought we put a good bill out on the table. And again, as a guy that comes out of small business, I pay a lot more for my health insurance per employee than the big companies I was competing with. And if you believe in small business as the engine of economic growth, we should have passed a bill that brings down the cost of health care for small business. You know, then Scanlon and Lester came forward with a skinny up bill, a bill that would have made a real difference, though. The idea that we were, we were going to be able to get a federal waiver for reinsurance uh, for folks with pre-existing conditions, Christine, and that would have brought down the cost of health care for everybody in the state, especially those on the exchange. So you, you've got to ask the people who talked that bill to death why they did it. Why did they say, I don't want to bring down the high cost of health care? Because that's what that bill would have done. What's, what's in the session that you can say helps? Small businesses. Um, they're angry about a 50% increase in minimum wage, FMLA, uh, scaled back credit for pass through equity, uh, uh, pass through entry tax, and a few other things. And I'm wondering what your message is to them that you think the session did to promote business development and economic growth. I think it's a session that's going to jumpstart our small businesses and our economy. It's an economy, like I said, that's been stuck in the run for a long time. We've been near the bottom of the barrel in terms of new job creation, and in terms of business startups, to be more specific. Look, we did do a minimum wage. We phased it in over four and a half years. We followed the lead of the Fiscal Commission. We're doing it alongside what our other neighbors are doing. We had some exemptions uh, that make it uh, doable. Look, I come out of small business. You want to pay people um, money to give them incentive to show up every day and make sure they know that they're valued. Pay family and medical leave, I gotta tell you, I was competing with Verizon every day. Verizon already offered services like that. Me as a small business, I had a harder time doing paid family and medical leave. So now this is the type of way that a small business can offer benefits that are A, well-deserved for people, and B, allows them to compete with the big boys. I think if you look, everybody has an initial reaction. Oh my God, it's changed, I'm not gonna like it. I think you're gonna find in a couple of years that this is something that's really making our state more competitive. 
And also it sends a message for young people and young women around the uh, country. Connecticut may be a place you want to be to start a business or work. Do you think it's fair that everybody has to pay that payroll tax except the state union represented state employees? Uh, all I know is I'm locked into some agreement with state employees that goes through uh, something like 2027. So uh, we'll have an opportunity to read this. What, what do you say to, to the people out there that are frustrated? Um, here's yet another Democratic governor, another Democratic controlled legislature, approving another round of tax increases almost. And, and you're sure, right, their, their assumptions are growing and they're just withholding this expected for about 5.5 to 7 million. So what, what, what do you say to people who are upset about these tax increases and say, there you guys go again, it's the same, same thing. And, you know, you said last night that it was going to be fiscal stability, but if you look at that fiscal note, I can say that bipartisan budget that they passed uh, two years ago, that led us with billions of dollars of deficit in the out years. We're beginning to get uh, control over that. I can tell you, Paul, that um, John Rowland said, uh, I'm going to balance the budget uh, and eliminate the income tax. He raised income taxes. Jody Rell raised income taxes. Dan Malloy raised income taxes. Susan and I said uh, this is a state that's going to live within its needs. We have one of the smallest increases in spending the state has seen in uh, many, many years. And we did it without raising taxes, right? Without raising income tax rates. And that is the headline you see around the country. I think a lot of people know this is a fresh start for the state. Resolving how we pay for our transportation upgrades is important. 
and we're going to have to get um, a sign off on the hospital deal. And I, I just got to remind you, that's really important. You know, for the last five years, we've had litigation against the state. We we're in real danger of uh, losing that litigation. It would have been a $4 billion hit for the state of Connecticut. It was a black cloud hanging over the state for, uh, you know, five years. You know, in the last uh, bipartisan budget, they said give back $400 million a year. That would have been a big hit to the taxpayers of the state of Connecticut. So one of the things we're going to be asking our legislation to do is ratify a deal which takes that litigation off the table, solves that, reduces our, uh, our ongoing liability to the hospitals by an awful lot, and we did it through strong collaborative uh, negotiation. And I got to thank the hospitals for coming to the table. It's a, they're solution oriented. We got it done. But are you going to be starting those negotiations then with the tribes and the family interests, or is that something you're letting the legislature deal with now? No, there's nothing to you know restart. We never ended it. You know, as you know, I want to deal with A gets us out of the legal muck. Uh, B is global, so it deals with sport betting and internet gambling. And, and C has some um, facility there for Bridgeport, because that was a deal that I, that I made. And we're still working on that. Governor, when, um, when you ran, you seem to have ambitions about making structural changes in the government. You talked about the business background. Now that you've been in office this long, you do reference the, the collective bargaining agreement that runs through 2027. How would your expectations of what you can do to make structural changes, how do they match up against what you now do? I think we've made four structural changes that I've seen in the state in a long time. Uh, we fixed the, um, the teaching pension uh, in a sustainable, long-term way when we were facing a really severe fiscal cliff, or in the case of a stock market or economic downturn, we would have been at incredible risk as a state. Um, still working with the hospitals and Lembo and labor, but we have already uh, achieved a 40, 50 million dollar savings in employee health care costs in this coming year. And the year thereafter, we're going to find another 100 million dollars in savings going forward. And uh, wait for uh, Josh Cabal when he gets going over at DAS. You know, the first thing that we're going to announce, not to steal any thunder, but as we start to centralize more and more of the functions, for example, personnel, you really need 25 different personnel departments spread across all these different departments. Uh, you're going to find a significant savings there. So we begin to streamline what we're doing. That plus the IT. So, so is the going to be, um, you know, everybody, DMV is everybody's postal board the one involved in the state government, we think state government. Yeah. Um, is DMV going to be more efficient in more efficient four years? Than you're not going to recognize DMV in four years. More importantly, you're not going to recognize it next year. So we did get the bill in place that extends the period of time between licensing from six years to eight years. That brings down those um, uh, long waits significantly. And that's something we can do now before we get the IT in place so you can do all those transactions online. Paul. Governor, I asked uh, this question a lot yesterday to lawmakers, asking them to grade your rookie season. I think it's only fair. How would you grade your rookie season? I think we did pretty damn well. <laughs> you know, we got a budget on time. That doesn't always happen around this building. We did it in a way that structure is supportable for the near term. That's pretty good. We kept faith with our municipalities, kept faith with education, so they can plan accordingly. I think that's pretty good. And we talked about a lot of the other um, items that have been stuck in the muck for a long time, like minimum wage. They weren't able to move that for uh, years and years, and we got that done. Um, I still got to fix the transportation system. We're going to get that done. With all due respect, respect grade. 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 A grade? I don't think you'd ask a suit and self grade yourself. Uh, <laughs> I'll give you that. Go ahead. Yeah. I'll give you that. All right, yes. there you go. He on a lot of promises. Well, no. Before he didn't make an A plus because he said he got to the bottom. So, uh, <laughs> Matt, Matt Bird is a very insightful. Governor, Governor, with all due respect, if we could go back to Tulsa for one minute. Well, actually, you mentioned transportation, so I'm not going out of turn here. Uh, in your world, an extra 50 or 100 bucks a month to get somewhere is no big deal. But to average working people in New Haven County or the Naugatuck Valley or Eastern Connecticut, it's a very big deal. 
That's why it's a difficult vote. Do, 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 do you grasp that concept? Of, I mean, we have more than two Connecticut's. We have several Connecticut's, and they're just average people. This is going to be a hardship for them. Especially, and small business people who have a bunch of trucks going out fixing plumbing or whatever they're doing. I grasp the idea that the aqueduct in the valley hasn't added a new job. In fact, you see brownfields as far as the eye can see there. And you need to turn around. I grasp the fact that what you want is good paying jobs. Not just pay you good paying jobs at a place where your kids know they have a real opportunity there. And I know that you're not going to be able to do that um, unless we fix that transportation system and speed that up. I know, you know, talking to uh, folks, it takes them 20 minutes longer to get from here to there. I know what that means if you're doing a local delivery. I know what that means if you're a mom trying to get to work and also get back in time to pick up your child. You know, we cannot let this fester as we study it, wait, put off any longer. Going back to healthcare, uh, there was a lot of uh, hope that there were some really ambitious things that might accomplish in the session, not just the public option, but other things. But really, in the bottom line, it was not much got through. Uh, you know, we've all heard the story about Cigna, about them supposedly making this threat. I mean, were the interests arrayed against these reforms just too strong? What, what, what happened here? I think we tried to do too much too late. I don't think we tried to do too much, but I think we tried to do it too late. And uh, I think this is, you're right, it's a big, important reform, and you want to get it right. And uh, believe me, we're going to revisit it, we're going to bring it back. You know, starting with the waiver that Christine was talking about, it can immediately bring down costs for the state, not costing the folks here any money. Uh, so maybe we do it in pieces, but um, we're going to get it done. I mean, should Signe even be at the table, though? <coughs> I mean, they are an insurer in the state, yes. They have zero customers in the marketplace that would have been impacted by the Connecticut option. Zero. Right. What, what why, why should they have a seat at the table? Um, I think everybody that's relevant and is a stakeholder has a seat at the table. The advocates, the patients, the small business, the insurance folks. I want the very best ideas so we can come up with the very best solution. But nobody has a veto the right stage. What did the Sigma CEO <coughs> what did the Sigma CEO say? What did he say to me? Yes. I uh, I called him, I said uh, this is the deal that's gonna be done and um, he said let me take a look at this. Um, as Christine pointed out, they weren't necessarily in the small business market. Uh, he's a good Connecticut citizen. He wants to make this work. I want to take the best ideas I can. So to be clear, you're not really ruling out talking about other stuff. I mean, your, 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 your goal, yeah, could you get him some water, somebody, please? Ron, Rob? <laughs> you're not ruling uh, anything out in these discussions. I mean, you, your, your prime focus is transportation, obviously, for the call of the special. <coughs> is it coming? Yeah. Yeah, they're pretty good. Uh, but you're open to gambling and all of this stuff when you meet with the leaders, is that correct? If, if we if we present that to our viewers and readers, is that accurate? I think that's accurate. Here, ask these guys a question. <laughs> <coughs> I think we're done. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.